Welcome to Autosport International 2020 for the 70th anniversary of Autosport magazine. Now, we're here in a room full of world-beating cars and this is just another one of those, the Jaguar XJR9. And next to me, I've also got its designer, Tony Southgate. Tony, thank you so much for joining me. Now, as this is your car, I was just wondering if you could just talk me through it, talk me through some of the key points of its design and why it was so strong. Well, uh, being a Le Mans car, obviously the aerodynamics are super important because uh, the brief was to do 240 miles an hour on the straight. This is every lap. It's not just like a once, once off. Every lap you're doing 240 miles an hour. And you've got to last 24 hours, which is quite a challenge. So aerodynamics were the primary uh, objective to get right. Uh, there was two configurations, uh, uh, what we call a sprint, which was the non-Le Mans race, uh, races, and then uh, and the Le Mans configuration. And basically, one had uh, Le Mans had lower drag, and so that you'd have a different nose splitter, and a few details like that. The louvers would disappear, and uh, the wing would be a bit different. But the emphasis was on pure on aero. On top of that, it needed a very strong structure to carry all this weight, because these things develop a lot of downforce, much more than a Formula One car. Uh, it's certainly in their day, uh, massive uh, loads. So it had a, a full width monocoque, which is, uh, I'll show you if you like it. The monocoque structure goes right, this is it. That's <laughs> your chassis. It's not bodywork, it serves two jobs. But, so that's body, but that's, as you can hear it, so, and that's uh, right down to here. And that goes right across, so you've got massive structure, which is great for safety, which is very important when you, that's those sort of speeds. If you have an accident, it's usually big. And uh, we did have one actually, and fortunately, the driver just stepped out. But uh, so we had this massive structure to be able to deal with the high downforce and the suspension loads. And uh, a few details on the aero. A lot of the aero is dictated by regulations. I mean, your maximum width is two meters, and there's a maximum length, and there's a maximum height for wings, things like that, which you just have to accept and go along with it. And so you achieve the best figures you can, and still within those regulations. Um, one of the obvious things you can see on the car that you didn't notice on most cars, or very few, was the fact that the rear wheels were always run covered up, uh, closed in, like this. Um, that, uh, that yielded another te up to 10% more downforce, which is dramatic. <laughs> if you took those off, the driver could feel the difference. So it wasn't there for, for the ride or just a, a pretty picture type of thing. <laughs> um, it, uh, it was served uh, some purpose. The, the only snag is, of course, when you did a wheel change, yes. which you did, how many? 32, I think, in, at Le Mans in, the, in those days. Uh, when you did a wheel change, you had to take those panels off. So we had to devise clips and the mechanics could get off quite easily and, uh, uh, and not uh, distract too much from their wheel chain. They, they weren't too happy with it, but it worked, it worked. So that visually, that uh, is quite noticeable. Um, other than that, the, what you can't see is the engine. It's, the impressive thing about all this, it's got a road car engine. It's got an off-the-shelf V12 Jaguar engine. It started off at six litres, but we gradually bore them out to seven litres. The best engine was seven. We did have a 7.4 litre as well. And uh, basically, if you had seven litres, you had 700 horsepower. If you had six and a half litres, you had 650 <laughs> horsepower and so on. And the 7.4, you had 740 horsepower. Uh, that was the easy way to generate horsepower. But it, it is just a single cam, two valve engine. That's the amazing thing, but very big and heavy, which was <laughs> a, bit, a major problem for me controlling this the weight because all that lump there you see that yeah. is full of engine <laughs> and it dominates the car when you're going in and out of corners so that uh, uh, you have to be very very careful on weight distributions and center gravities so the engine was actually recessed right into the fuel tank so it went right to the driver's shoulder in effect to get the weight far forward because uh, otherwise it would uh, dominate the car too much as it did it it did dominate the car, but you, it would actually, uh, it was acceptable and drivers could deal with it and it, it worked. Fantastic. And just finally, obviously it won the Le Mans 24 hours. What do you remember mainly from that? Uh, 
relief <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it was our third attempt. The two previous attempts uh, were with the XJR series of cars. Uh, we'd had uh, various failures, uh, engine failure, or gearbox failure, things like that. Uh, and third time, lucky, I suppose you'd say. <laughs> and the, before the race, I remember uh, John Egan, the boss of Jagger, said, we are going to win this race, aren't we? <laughs> Which is a rather tricky question to get from the boss of Jaguar. And you just say, oh, yeah, yes, of course. <coughs> we hope so. <laughs> uh, and, and we did. I mean, basically, you just got to keep going. And the gearbox is always a weak link because uh, they were old-fashioned manual gear changes, a uh, five-speed gearbox, what I call crash gearbox. So they take a, a lot of punishment. And... Uh, in 3,000 odd kilometers of driving, yeah. the poor old gearbox <laughs> has a very, very hard time. And so he's always fingers crossed uh, with the gearbox. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Tony. And there's many more legendary cars here at Autosport International. Stay tuned for more.